Hello, let's do some monopsony graphs and uh, labor cost analysis. So here in the notes, uh, we've got a monop monopsonist labor market uh, where there's one dominant firm. This was common in the you know, 1800s or rural areas. You've got one firm that's hiring people. These are pretty good jobs and uh, not a lot of competition for uh, workers, right? So. Um, so here we've got uh, quantity, how many labor, how many laborers or how many miners are going to be there? What are the total costs to the firm? This is what the firm cares about. Uh, how much do I have to pay them? And so in this example, in, and this is a non-competitive labor market. So in order to get more workers to show up, I'm going to have to pay them more. And um, this is unlike some of the perfectly competitive models that we've done. So this is a monopsony. Uh, that that respect. So, and marginal labor costs. This is the change in total labor costs over the change in quantity. And uh, in the real world, you know, this you set this up in a spreadsheet might not be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? These might be hundreds of workers, uh, might be tens of workers, something like that. Total product. This is how much the mine is going to pull out of the ground. How much uh, what they're what they're producing essentially, and then the price of the product uh, sold. So in this case, it'd be two dollars. And then over here, our friend, marginal revenue product. So let me go through this. So, uh, you know, this doesn't matter. Uh, the wage rate is zero, and then we won't have a number there. Okay. So first worker, uh, you know, pay $10, and the worker will show up to pay $10 an hour. And this is total labor cost divided by quantity. So to get that second worker, I have to pay um, the second. I have to pay the second worker a higher wage. Well, I, I also have to pay the first worker that wage. So my total labor cost is going to be forty dollars divided by two. So this means twenty dollars, right? So twenty dollars an hour. So I'll have to pay to get two workers to show up. Now at three, it's going to be thirty dollars an hour. Four, forty dollars an hour. Fifty dollars an hour. Sixty dollars an hour. And seventy dollars an hour. Okay, and. It actually isn't that uncommon in, in mining work or piece work. When the workers are there, they work really, really hard, and they, they do get pretty high wages. So if that seems unrealistic to you, um, some of these uh, temporary type work you know, does show up. Okay, marginal labor cost. So this is the additional cost from going from here to here, 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 and so on. Um, so the additional labor cost of that first worker is 10. That makes sense. The additional labor cost of the second worker is 30 because I'm going to pay both workers 40, whereas before I was only paying one worker 10, right? So then 50, 60, and this is what the firm really, you know, this is what the firm really cares about. Oh, I just made a mistake there. Not 60, 70, 70, 90, 110, and 130. Okay, and then this is how much they produce uh, of ore in this case, and then we'll multiply that by two, okay, uh, to get the marginal uh, revenue product, right? So we'll multiply what we what we are missing here is a, a column. If it helps you, um, there is a marginal product. We'll put price there, okay, because marginal revenue product is the marginal product times the price, okay? So we have to calculate. We can calculate the marginal product really easily here. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. And so this times this, this is 140. So that first worker produces 70 units of ore. We multiply that by 2, the price is 2. And the, that first worker is worth $140 for the firm. Okay, or they're bringing in 140 for the firm. And pretty nice, the firm only has to pay them $10. So pretty good deal. I'm totally going to hire that first worker, right? Now as I as I go up, the marginal revenue product decreases because I'm having to pay these higher wages. Okay, so 100, 80, 60, 40, and 20. Okay, so this is the worth uh, marginal revenue product from each worker. And then over here, this is marginal labor costs. Okay, so I'm going to hire the second worker. I'm going to hire the third worker. I'm going to hire the fourth worker. They bring a profit of 10. However, this fifth set of workers, uh, I have to, in order to hire the fifth set of workers, I have to pay $90 
additional, but they're only going to, that fifth worker, they're only going to bring in 60. So if I'm a monopsonist, I'm still going to hire, or actually I'm not going to hire the workers. I'm going to cut back to here, right? And instead of paying $40 an hour, I'm going to sit there and think, well, could I lower the wage, right? And, and decrease the wage. And I'm going to decrease the wage to whatever the supply of labor is, okay? And that'll get the workers to set up so, or to, to show up. So there's a supply function here um, dictating this, uh, and I'm going to use that to, to hire my workers. So this is a table format of what that might look like. Uh, then if we graph it, or I'll give you the graph, right? Um, let's see, am I able to? Yeah, there we go. However, I'm not able to or get rid of that. Sorry about that. So ignore that, I suppose. So this is what's called the marginal factor cost, or the uh, the marginal labor cost on that on that additional right, we, or that example we did before. This is the additional um, factor cost. It could be labor, or whatever, um, over the additional quantity, right? So uh, this is as as I hire more of these workers, I'm having to pay everybody more, right? But I don't want to. So remember, there's that supply function, okay? And then this demand, this is the marginal revenue product, okay? So in that last example is marginal revenue product of labor. If you're thinking real world stuff, there's also a marginal revenue product of capital or maybe a resource too. Um, and this example is a hospital, right? So. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where the marginal factor cost equals the marginal revenue product, okay, which is right here. Um, but I'm not going to pay that uh, cost. I wonder if that'll go, make that go away. Oops. No, it won't. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pay this monopsony wage. Okay, I'm going to knock the wage down to here because I know that the supply of workers will, I will get QM, I'll get enough workers there uh, to show up, but uh, I don't want to pay this higher cost, and I'm not going to because I have monopsony power, okay? Well, we've seen this before. This is, this right here is our old buddy, dead weight loss. So a monopsonist is going to cause a dead weight loss, right? Whereas if it was a competitive, um, uh, environment labor market we would see uh, we wouldn't worry about that too much we'd, we'd see right here okay the the firm's just gonna hire right up to C they're gonna hire that competitive the workers will get paid slightly more than they would under a monopsony and there'd be more workers hired but under a monopsony uh, the firm is gonna get this better deal here okay so we'll do a couple examples of what that might look like so here we have the wage rate this is quantity of labor so if everything is uh, competitive, then we just go to where the supply meets the demand for labor, and it would be right here. So the competitive wage is going to be $15 an hour, and they're going to hire 100 workers. Okay, but it's not competitive because I'm telling you it's not. Uh, we have a single a buyer of labor, and we've got this marginal factor cost here. So we go to where marginal factor cost equals marginal revenue product, which is right here. And that's a, that should would be at twenty dollars an hour and seventy five employees, but I'm not going to pay twenty five dollars an hour. I'm going to pay twelve fifty. Okay, so twelve fifty uh, will get seventy five workers to show up. These workers here get they lose out. They they're not going to get to work. Okay, and the workers that do work are going to get paid less. So this this creates this dead weight loss here. So it's this triangle right here. Remember. How to calculate dead weight loss. Okay, so dead weight loss is one half base times height, which is just a triangle. So in this case, it's going to be one half, it's the distance from 20 to 1250, which is 750 times those loss of workers, so 25 workers. So 25 workers won't get to work. And the wages that'll be lost are, are 750. So let me pull up calculator here. We'll keep that. I think it'll still work. Yep. Okay, so 750 times uh, 25, and then divide by two. We get a deadweight loss of $93.75. Okay, so that one. Let's do one more here. 
Okay, here we have marginal factor cost up here. Here's the supply of labor. Here's the marginal revenue product. Remember, competitive uh, labor market's gonna gonna um, get us to that equilibrium wage right there and get that many workers. But we're not competitive, so we're gonna go to our marginal factor cost equals marginal revenue product. And again, we're gonna do that because if they hire more workers, their their marginal factor cost goes way up but the value of those workers goes way down, okay? So it's just a perspective issue here. So go down to here. I don't know. How big is the deadweight loss? Or, you know, another way of saying that is the loss of efficiency. So deadweight loss can be one half. So distance between here and here is 10. And distance between here and here is 100. Ooh, I like this example. I don't need a calculator. So this is 1,000. And the thousand and a half is uh, five hundred. Okay, so the dead weight loss is five hundred dollars, and what, we, what that really represents is hundred workers don't get to work, and all of those workers are going to miss out on ten dollars worth of wages. Right, so that multiplied out. So that's how to calculate imperfect labor market uh, efficiency.